Hi, I'm Steve Stroud. I'm Executive Director of Roswell, Inc. I want to thank you for participating this morning. Uh, we're sending you the video recording of Coffee and Conversation with the Mayor, Mayor Lori Henry. And uh, we want to thank you and thank the Mayor for her participation uh, as she engages in getting Roswell back to business. So thank you again. Uh, you will find that we are a few seconds into the recording. She's in mid-sentence, but you didn't miss anything. So uh, we'll take it from there. And remember, we do have virtual coffee connects where you can connect with other businesses. They're free. And I would encourage you to go to our website at roswellinc.org and check it out and register for one of our events coming up. Thanks and have a great day. We're trying to um, land on our feet. So having said that, my husband and I have a small business and it's been affected. Uh, we're in the promotional products business and I can tell you that for the foreseeable future, there will not be trade shows. Uh, I know that a lot of our customers have canceled their uh, trade show season orders. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're just like you, we're pivoting and, and looking for a different audience and the way and a way to stay afloat and our and keep our um, business lively. So I I appreciate what you all are doing, what you're going through. This is very very difficult. And you know when when we are thinking about the fact that our livelihoods are at stake, that's that's something that never leaves your mind. That's something that wakes you up in the middle of the night. That's something that you're dealing with on a daily basis. It's something that causes stress, just as though business as usual isn't stressful. But this added stress on top of it um, is just, it's very difficult. And I want you to know that the city is here to do whatever we can possibly do to help with the recovery and help open up Roswell for business. And thank you again for having me. Great, Lori. Thanks. I'm going to turn it over to Carissa Turner, who's going to read some of the questions and get your response. So thanks. Excellent. All right. For everyone who is joining us today, I'm going to run through a little bit of how the Q&A will work. We have offered an opportunity when you registered to submit questions to ask the mayor. You can also submit them live during the event right now by sending a chat directly to the Roswell Inc. host. We'll be going through those as well. However, we are going to be prioritizing the questions that came through in advance for the registration, and we'll hopefully be able to get to as many as we can. We're also going to focus specifically on questions that are involving the topic of COVID-19, the impact of the city, the response from the city, the way we're gonna reopen, and questions that pertain directly to that topic as well. If your question is not able to be, is not one that we're able to get to, we encourage you to, to reach out if that's something that you feel like your question was not able to be addressed. Our team has done the best job that we can going through those questions so far, combining questions that have similar themes because we received a great response. Everyone's wanting to, to know and learn about what's happening. And so we're gonna kick off with, with those questions and as they come in, we'll go through those as well. So thank you everyone for participating and for sending these in advance to us. With that, uh, Mayor Henry, the first question we have is probably one of our most popular, so we're going to start there. And it is the question of how has the city's budget been affected by COVID-19, by the economic slowdown? Specific questions in that, is there a percentage difference between it? How are collections looking? And how is this going to impact projects the city has over the next one to two years? First, let me say that um, I am very proud to live in the city of Roswell and be involved in this government because we are very fiscally conservative. And while things aren't great right now, we as a city financially are in a better position than many of our sister cities to um, make it through the storm. Having said that, our um, revenues are down by about 11%. And um, we have predicted that for the last three months or so. And now I see that the um, state of Georgia is kind of falling in line with that so you know our staff does a great job and looking at everything to predict because these are unpredictable times so we're down about 11 percent we've got a hiring freeze with the exception of our police department we've got a spending freeze in the city of roswell and what troubles me a great deal is the fact that we've got a pay raise freeze our 
our employees will, at this point in time, will not receive a pay raise this year. So we are just really being conservative. Now, the good news is normally we have a, an annual budget and then a mid-year budget to adjust depending on how revenues are coming in. When I presented my budget to council, um, I am requiring that we have a quarterly budget review. So what we'll be looking at, and we're freezing all capital projects as well, with, with the exception, there are some projects that are on the tracks right now and can, we can't slow them down. They're, they're already in their place. However, projects where we can pause or projects that you know, we can freeze for right now and then reactivate them. But we're gonna look at these um, every quarter and what we can add back in on a quarterly basis, we will do. Now I'll give you the good news as well. Uh, we were predicting for this last month that we would have a 50% drop in sales tax revenues. Keep in mind for the city, you know, you know, as business owners, sales tax reflect your revenues. Now, as a city, though, we also have a T-SCLOS on our sales tax, and that funds transportation projects. So um, that reduces our, our revenues there as well. Here's the good news. The good news is we're only down 30%. So yeah, I lead in with the 50% because if I just drop the bomb that our revenues, our sales tax revenues are down 30%, everybody would just say, oh. But no, that's not the case. Um, it, that's good news. So we're reviewing this on a daily basis here, and I'll be taking the budget reviews to council on a quarterly basis. So we are hoping our recovery is sooner rather than later. I know we all are, and but we're poised to to be dealing with that on a regular basis. That is certainly good news that the drop has not been as high as was anticipated. So that's great. Yes. Yeah. The next question is related to city facilities being open. Essentially, which facilities are open, which are not open yet? How is the city slowly opening up its doors and its services to the community and to the businesses? Well, and first let me tell you this, uh, you know, our commitment is to the safety of our business owners and our residents, but it's also a commitment to our staff. With City Hall, uh, we have opened uh, last week to appointments only. And so you can go online on our website and make an appointment. You can also call my office and make an appointment if you'd like to come in to see me. Uh, but we're phasing that in. Uh, our public spaces are a little slower. With our Recreational parks departments, we still have our picnic pavilions closed and we still have our playgrounds closed. And um, we're waiting to see what the governor does with that. But right now, um, his executive order is 25 people or less within family units and um, you know just social distancing. Also, I would like to say that the governor has put a ban on all live music venues. So that we cannot open up, it's a state mandate. And so that, will aff that affects our cultural arts center. So George Ensemble Theater cannot resume, our, our local dance studios cannot resume. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure what he's gonna do. I, I'm not gonna anticipate the governor's next move, but we should know something by Friday of this week. And just in general, so you know, my executive orders, I mirror his uh, because he has already said that, you know, he, he is setting the rules here. So what I do is mirror his. We've had a couple of additional things that I'm allowing and I, I think we've got some questions that relate to that. So I won't get ahead of myself, but um, so, you know, we're, we're doing this methodically. And because once we open up, it's difficult to close back down again. And we just want to do it carefully. We want to make sure that the COVID numbers don't increase. Um, but then also we've got this whole issue with public confidence that we're trying to deal with. And that's very, very important to get folks back out into our business. I had dinner at um, the Mill Kitchen on the Square on Saturday. And I'm happy to say their outdoor seating area was packed and that tells me that people are ready to get back out 
and get back into our stores and our businesses. And um, I don't want to go into too much detail because I could talk all day, but um, you know, along we've got the issues as well with our daycares. Um, we've opened up summer camps um, and that's going well, but there are a lot of rules involved with it. And many of our daycare providers aren't ready to and can't accommodate all of the rules and regulations. So you all know, as well as I do, that if we can't take care of our children, we can't go back into the workforce unless we're working for, from home. Thank you. The next one is a little bit related to what you were just talking about as far as uh, reopening and large gatherings. We had a couple questions come in about the overall guidelines for hosting a special event, whether it was a wedding venue that was asking or a business that wants to put together a, um, a small corporate party or something along those lines. So could you share a little bit about what those guidelines are for both the business or community or how the city's thinking through those? Well, in, in general, the, as, as I said before, the governor's order trumps everything. And the governor's order is basically saying no live music venues, um, no gatherings of more than 25 people, you can have less. Here's the interesting thing though that I've learned recently is private homes are exempt. And I think Andrew asked that question at team. our um, our business recovery task force, if someone could have an event in their home. and homes are exempt from the orders so yes so if there's a catering opportunity a wedding or wedding reception in a home that is um, something that you can do according to the governor's orders and what we're looking what we're looking at is um, basically honoring the governor's orders so it's up to you all if you have a wedding facility or a, a events facility when does it make economic sense to open up your facility again, given all of the social distancing? I will also say, and I say this very, very carefully, um, our code enforcement and our police department are not out looking for violations. It is a complaint driven system. So, and the governor, I have not seen the governor of the state of Georgia. I haven't seen a great deal of enforcement on their part. Now, the tricky part about this is it's complaint driven. And what I've learned, um, I've learned a lot of good things through this whole process of COVID, but the one negative thing I've learned is that, um, you know, remember in elementary school, you had the tattletailers? Well, guess what? We all grew up. <laughs> And we've still got a group of tattletailers out there. So I, I would suggest to you all to be cautious, but please know we're not, we're not out looking for violations. Uh, we really don't have the man power or the inclination to do that. So, um, but, but the governor has set a mandate and we need to follow it. Did that answer your question? Kind of, sorta. <laughs> yes, I believe so. You mentioned a minute ago uh, during your answer something about the the task force that you put together and i think that would be a really good point at which to to pivot and ask that question it's not on our script so i'm going to throw that in but but for those who are on this call what is the task force that you've put together you've invited us to participate can you talk a little bit about what it is what its purpose is and how you envision that helping us move toward recovery well and this task force is called the mayor's business recovery task force and what we've pulled together are, of course, Roswell Inc. We've pulled together city staff, as well as a, a variety of our business owners. So it's everything from, you know, a small mom and pop business to some of our major employers. And the whole purpose of that, and the purpose for the mix of people is, I, as a mayor of Roswell, need to understand what I can do to help, what I can't do to help. And a lot of the questions that were raised um, in our meetings are great questions. And it basically has given um, Steve Stroud and me our marching orders to get answers to things. And I know that um, Steve is sharing that with you all. So, um, and let me also say that I'm counting on Roswell Inc. as the information conduit on whether it's the recovery task force or this event. Uh, any questions that I can't answer, I will provide to you and then you can get it out to the folks later. Absolutely. 
Thank you. And we are, we are doing our best to make sure that that happens. Great. Uh, the next question is, are there grants available to businesses through the city of Roswell? No, sadly, there are not. And um, the city does not have, well, I can back up, but the city does not have that mechanism in place for COVID grants, I should say. So COVID grants are all coming from the feds and through the state and through the county. So Fulton County um, has received over $100 million in COVID grants that they're using because Fulton County is our health and social services conduit. And so they're basically dealing with all of that. The, um, the feds are saying that cities of, you know, less than half a million people can't, don't qualify. They're working on changing that, but I'm not sure which grants, what they're looking at. Uh, but I can tell you right now, what we're doing is we're looking at the grants that will allow us some reimbursement for, uh, face masks and, and hand sanitizer. And uh, because if you think about it, we've got our first responders that are out on the line and um, they're putting themselves in harm's way and, and we're trying to provide them with the best um, equipment that we can. And, and so that's what we're looking at. But having said that, of course, you know, we have separate from COVID-19, we have a grants department here at the city. And I'm sure you all probably know Danny Blitch. And, um, you know, we call him our million dollar man because he can unearth grants that the rest of us couldn't find in a million years. Uh, so that's always a resource. And then I know that Roswell Inc. has put out a lot of information on the COVID grants, uh, what's going on right now with that and how to qualify for those. Yeah, I would add what to, to the mayor's comments. It's very important. What, follow our COVID-19 bulletin. Uh, as Fulton County did this uh, yesterday, you'll see uh, that uh, there's a grant out for arts groups, uh, art, artists, uh, nonprofits. Um, periodically, they're grabbing and we're posting as many non uh, uh, grant applications as we can possibly. Uh, as we get them. And we're also researching those that would pertain to small businesses and where you can go apply for those grants. So keep follow our COVID-19 uh, releases. Thanks, Steve. The next question relates to sign permits. We've had some questions on, is it possible to have sign permit fees waived through the end of 2020 or are there any kind of particular allowances the city has looked at? Okay, well, this is probably a part of our government that you all don't want to know, <laughs> but I'd like to explain it. Um, right now, we are in a state of emergency. I, as the mayor of Roswell, declared a state of emergency. While we are in the state of emergency, I can unilaterally waive those things. And as you all know, we are allowing um, temporary signs. Um, we're also allowing temporary tents. The only thing we ask is that they're safely installed. Um, and the temporary signs so that you all are not, you don't have your hands tied behind your back because you can't let people know that, you know, you're opening up dining in. You can't let people know, you know, that, um, that you're providing a service that they might not realize that you had. And, uh, however, I will end my state of emergency when the governor ends his. Okay, and when that happens, all of our ordinances are in play again. And that would take an active council to change our ordinances to do anything. So I don't have that authority anymore after the state of emergency. And I will also tell you that to go through a process like that to extend permits through the end of the year, uh, it's, it's about an, at minimum a 90 day process. So we get back in, after the state of emergency, we get back into the quagmire of government moves really, really slow. So now I can guarantee you as long as we've got that state of emergency in effect, we're fine. But after that, we'll have to go, we'll have to abide by our laws. And if we wanna change them, we can change them through the correct process. Great. So just, just to clarify on my end, so that means that for, for a business who's using that temporary sign or tent ability right now, once the state of emergency expires, that temporary permission expires along with it. 
Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. I'll make sure. Okay. And I will extend mine as long as the governor extends his. Okay. Which right now is through July 12th. Is that correct, Stel? Yes. And we're, we're expecting to hear from the governor on Friday. Okay. I don't, I can't guarantee that, but um, we as a, our staff here meets, we go through his executive orders and I don't know how many of you have read those, but I think the last one was 32 pages. And um, it's typical, uh, you, it's obvious that lawyers were working on it. So we go through that and we, all of the department heads meet uh, with me, the management, the emergency management team, and what does that order look like and what do I need to do as the mayor to support that order as well as extend my orders. Great. Thank you. We have a quick question that's come in live to clarify something that we talked about just a minute ago. When you were talking about event venues, um, is it that they cannot host events larger than 25? Was that correct? Yes. Okay. And for a wedding venue that may offer live music, since live music is not allowed, is that in conflict then as well? No. And I, I'll try to clarify this. Okay. So for example, you have a restaurant or a, a wedding facility and you typically have bands there or you know you've got a guy in the corner of the patio playing a guitar your main business is still being a restaurant or a wedding event so you can continue with that what you can't do is um, create an event outside of your scope so uh, for, unfortunately, for example, Gypsy Rose is still closed because that's a live music venue. Our cultural arts center is still closed because that's a, a live performance venue. Um, and But then if you get to, I'm trying to think of a good example. So let's say I own a gas station and I decide that um, I need to sell more gas. So I set up a band out under the canopy with the gas pumps, and I invite people to my, my live music venue. That is not allowed. That you would need a special permit for, and right now the city is not um, issuing special permits. Great, did that you. explain it? It's, yeah. I, yes, clear as mud, but <laughs> I, I hope it did. If, if I didn't, please ask again. Yeah. It it seems relatively clear, but again, if, if you haven't received the clarity that you'd like from, from this, let our team know, email the mayor, we'll make sure that we get you the answers that you need to help your business succeed and prosper through this. The next question we have is, is the city going to continue allowing restaurants to sell full bottles of alcohol for carryout after this event is past us? We are bound by state law on that. So, uh, that is state law. That's not the city of Roswell law. As you know, we in Roswell, we do have some open carry um, areas of our city. And of course, that will continue. But um, it's up to the governor what he does um, with state law. So we, we have no authority over that. But the governor said that he would basically overlook that for now. And um, so we're going with it. <laughs> Gotcha. All right. We have another another restaurant related question. This one is about the use of common space, parking areas, areas not traditionally used for dining. Can they be used right now to extend your dining area to help abide by the social distancing guidelines? As long as we are in a state of emergency, um, we are complaint driven and um, I we have not issued a single ticket yet in the city of Roswell during this whole COVID event. Um, I don't anticipate that we will be issuing tickets. Uh, however, um, I don't, as far as the restaurants go, I'll, you know, I'll give you an example. When we opened up the, the heart of Roswell Park, uh, we added picnic benches there. And that was just our way of saying, you know, if you don't have the room where you are, please feel free to locate here. Um, so we're not, proactively um, going after folks for doing things. Now, let me, let me correct. If there is a health safety issue, we will ask the business to, for example, if a tent isn't secured properly, we'll ask the business to remove it. 
Um, but as long as all of the rules are far, as far as how you're, where you're going to, how you build the tent, I don't know what the terminology is, we're good with that. So, um, and I really don't, we're here to help. We're not here to nitpick. So as long as we're in a state of emergency, please feel free to be creative and, um, and we'll just go from there. But when the state of emergency ends, we are back to following all of our ordinances without fail. So it's temporary, I apologize, but it's just what we have to deal with as a local government. One of one of the things that, that we've heard a lot of questions about, and we've gotten some of those as well, is the excise tax and business registration collection. We know that that was that was extended or essentially paused for a time. What right. is the status of that? Has that renewed? And when are those due? If they are due, what is the status of that for our June thirtieth? June thirtieth. Yes. yes. Okay. So coming up. Okay. Same process as well. And as far as. If, if an appointment is needed to accomplish that, that is something that a business can do right now is make that appointment at City Hall if they need to come in, correct? Absolutely, we're here. Okay, excellent. We have um, a question or two that's come in about co-working spaces. Are there limitations on co-working space? Are those considered a small gathering? Are they, they have to abide by the same guidelines? Are they more considered a special event versus a workspace? How does that work? Everything revolves around 25 people or less. So, uh, and um, I don't know the typical size of a co-working space. I would just encourage um, those spaces to use social distancing. Um, you know, uh, let me just say this. I have found here at City Hall, we're not completely open yet, but because of the limited number of people we have, it's very easy to social distance without masks. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I would encourage that. Um, but then, of course, everybody needs to use common sense and be careful. So it's, it all hinges around that 25 or less. Now, the governor could increase that number to 50 or less the next go around. I don't know. He could just make it wide open. I, I can't predict that, but that's what we'll be looking for when he releases his next order. Excellent. Another question that we have received is, and we touched on this at the beginning a little bit, but as far as large city events like Alive in Roswell, Music on the Hill, things like that, are those are those still on deck to happen this year? Are you canceling them month by month? How are those working? Well, we've got a couple of different issues. We're, uh, and for example, I'll give you the 4th of July example. We had a contract with the folks that would do the 4th of July display. And that contract, we had to cancel 4th of July because of the contract. And we can't ramp up. So, for example, if the governor said today, you just have all the 4th of July celebrations you want. I'm not going to regulate it. We don't have those contracts. We don't have the staff in place. We don't have the logistics done to allow that. Um, now, Alive in Roswell is a, is a different animal altogether. That we rely on sponsorships. And um, what we're looking at right now is on a month to month basis, closing that, but also we're looking at, you know, could we, when we open it back up, could we extend it through November uh, at, a, at a month on there and then offer next year to start it a little bit, a month early and extend it. But that's gonna really be up to what our sponsors wanna do and um, what makes economic sense for them, you know, in order to promote their business. So those were kind of doing, you know, month by month. Uh, music on the Hill, that sort of thing, we're just playing it by ear because that, that would be, a, you know, a live music venue. And right now the governor has banned those. So um, we're just kind of taking it day by day, um, week by week and month by month. And uh, hopefully we'll, you know, we in Ross will love to have these public gatherings, you know, whether it's gathering down at the river or here for a music event or alive in Roswell. One thing I've learned about folks in Roswell is we want to be outside and we want to be socializing. So this is just uncharted territory for us. So as quickly as we can open it up and safely, we will do that. 
And we're looking at that on a regular basis. Great, thank you so much. And we have we have the mayor scheduled until about 9.45. And so to be respectful of your time, we're gonna go ahead with one or two more. And then again, if you didn't get your question answered, we're happy to try to connect those dots for you and get you the information that you need. The last question, um, specific question that we have had a lot of interest in is how are ribbon cuttings and grand openings and those types of smaller events, but business focused events, how are those going to look in the future? And what are you guys doing to start thinking about those? Well, let me just say um, safety first. However, a, a lot of our ribbon cuttings are 25 people or less, you know, are, are smaller businesses. Um, but then we do have larger, you know, one that comes to mind is McKesson. That was, that was a huge ribbon cutting and, you know, we had hundreds there. So um, what, we'll, what I'll be looking at is, uh, like I said before, I hate these virtual meetings. I want I want face to face interaction with people. So as soon as we can do a ribbon cutting, um, not virtually, I am on board with that. I might be wearing a mask, but you know that's fine. Um, the other thing too that Steve and I have talked about, and I think we've got the perfect opportunity right now is with some of our smaller home based businesses, or for example, um, folks that are um, co locating in space they feel as though they really don't have a spot to do a ribbon cutting because you know they don't want to open up their home or whatever the case may be and so we're talking about virtual ribbon cuttings for our home based businesses and you know some of our smaller businesses that really aren't in a comfortable spot to um, showcase their office and i think that's an excellent opportunity but really the most important thing for me and you know, the reason why I attend all of the ribbon cuttings is number one, I wanna show my support. Number two, I want our businesses to know that my office and City Hall are open. And then number three, it's building that conversation and relationships because it's very important to me that our business owners feel as though they're a part of the Roswell family and having the one-on-one -on -one relationships to elected officials as well as city staff as well as roswell inc i think that that's so important because you know when any of our businesses if they're um upsizing downsizing whatever they're doing i want them to think first and foremost i don't want to move out of roswell i want to stay in roswell so so that's that's the goal and it's support is the goal and once again, if there's anything my office or City Hall can do to help you all, I, we're just a phone call away. So um, we're here to help, we're here to support, and hopefully we'll get back out there for um, ribbon cuttings and, and coffees. And <laughs> Absolutely. Um, before we turn things back over to Steve to close us out, and he might give us a, a couple tidbits on our end of what we're doing as far as ribbon cuttings are concerned since we have been in discussions. Is there anything, I guess my last question for you is, is there anything that you wish we all would have thought to ask you that you want to leave the business community with today um, as, a, as a charge of how to do business together or anything that you just want to leave us with today before we close out? Well, one of the good things it, that have come out of COVID-19 is I have watched our business owners pivot I have watched them survive and I have watched them create partnerships with our other businesses. And I think that if we, anything that we can walk away with from COVID-19 is the fact that we have all learned that we're there for each other. And um, it's not all a competitive climate out there. Uh, and we have all recognized that um, we can help each other and when we help each other, it helps us as well. So um, that, that has truly been a rewarding experience that I've had with this. Thank you so much, Lori. We appreciate you being here today with us. I'm gonna turn things back over to Steve. Steve, if you wanna close us out, any last remarks or any last questions you may have, turn yeah. things over. Absolutely, thank you, Chris. A thank you to my team, uh, to the Roswell Inc. team again for what they do and how they've, they've reacted uh, to be available to you as business owners. 
Um, a couple things I want to hit on daycare. The mayor said, uh, uh, talked about daycare. We will release today, uh, probably after we get off this call, uh, we did a survey of all 29 uh, daycares, uh, privately held daycares in the city of Roswell. We know their capacity, we know their contacts, we know what that looks like. So spread that word, it'll be out on our, our website, but it'll be in this bulletin. Very important, as the mayor said, daycare is, is a key element. If we can't get our kids taken care of, we can't get back in, our, our employees back in the office. So we have been making phone calls, talking to these, these owners so we know what their capacity is. And now that we're connected with them, we'll update that as that opens up for each one of those daycares. Very important. The CDA, our Child Development Academy, uh, that's been a longstanding uh, provider of child care, is opening up on the 15th at 75% capacity. That's very important to you as business owners. Uh, so we want to make sure that, that you'll find that on our website. The other thing I want to put a pitch in for is uh, we surveyed the, the, the restaurants. Uh, that have participated with us uh, with Summer Sipping that was supposed to kick off on uh, June 1. We are proud to announce that we'll have capacity of over 75 free business restaurants to participate this year in our Summer Sipping program. And we're glad to be a part of the recovery for these restaurants to do something different. Virtual mixology, kits for each one of the, the businesses so you can come in and get a, a dinner and a drink and take home the kit to make it, not the alcohol, but the kit and the ingredients. And we're hoping to have some fun to stimulate some business here in Roswell with a hard hit industry, and that's, that's, our, um, that's our hospitality industry. So we're very excited about that. I think things are looking better. We're gonna be very cautious on ribbon cuttings. We are going to follow the, the, the safety factors. We wanna get back there and cut ribbons and open things and get this economy going again uh, for Roswell. As the mayor said, we're blessed to be where we are. Uh, we're, we are fortunate uh, that we are still able to do business. We're here to help connect you. So any of our team, our numbers, our cell numbers are on our website. They're on our business cards. They're available all the time. So please reach out and, and let us help you or at least give you the connections. Mayor, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate all your leadership. Uh, I thank you. I see Ken Davis from our uh, executive team from Renaissance Bank that had joined us today. Thanks, Ken. We appreciate that. As I always end every meeting, it's a great day to do business in Roswell, Georgia. So go out and do some good business. Thanks for joining us today and we'll look forward to seeing you soon.